Let me let me throw the. I'm going to come back to us, um, but um, somebody's raising up his hand there. When we talk about Nigeria, we quote that very famous line from Maximilian de Zaglio that now we have made Italy, it's time to make Italians. And Abafi Meolo did quote that line consistently. Now we have made Nigeria, it's time to make Nigerians. So are there any positives from there? And secondly, uh, it is right to demonize the British. Uh, they had a mission. The mission was trade, was money, was business. But equally, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're downplaying the role that some Nigerians played in enhancing this trade. The likes of Madame Tinubu, that was constantly trading with Domingo Martinez, was giving our own people off to the British and giving an open door for them to come in. So it's sort of like, yeah, they did it, but it's sort of like a case of a mutually assured destruction. So I, I think in this conversation, let's talk about the inconvenient truth, the parts we played ourselves in all of this, the parts the likes of the Tinubu played in all of this, because if I didn't read your book, for instance, we'll call them heroes. The, like, the parts the likes of Lord Lugard played in all of this, because when I read Lord Lugard's The Dual Mandate, he wrote in 1925, he felt like he was a saint, like he was just coming to fix something. How can we come together to solve these archival problems? How can we pull resources together? Social media is so powerful today that we could, do, we could raise something together. And I'm sure that with um, people like this um, driving it, we are supporting, we can solve these kind of problems ourselves. History is replete with people collaborating. And the Holocaust was a great collaboration itself that showed people collaborating to, I mean, destroy so many people. But ultimately, I feel strongly that, you know, um, um, I'm in between the radical and also the um, mild radicals. You know, I feel strongly that we need to own this country and turn it around. We need to believe that we can. Um, did we, have we made... Have we made mistakes with our history? Have we had bad leaders? Have Nigerian leaders, I think our greatest problem, and I, and I, and I say it here, is that every great junction of this nation, the leaders have never been able to rise up to the occasion. So we've had times that, you know, we've had leaders, and same thing in other countries, but when it comes to critical junctions in our nation, we go back to our tribalism, we go back to our, that's what happens to us, and that kills this country. But I believe strongly that we can turn it around. The largest gathering of black people in the history of mankind cannot be a mistake. I wondered and I worry, even for the next gener generation, if we're building that capacity, if we're making the right investment in the quality of education, public education, that, can, you know, that we can have giants stand out, you know, the next generation. Something that I'm... And, um, Allah, you put me on the spot here, but I'm really thinking about the way forward. And I thought about something I'd read about, I think it was China, when you talked about seven and eight year olds. That I think there's something in every class about you know, Chinese domination. There's a vision and the, the place of fatherhood, the place of leadership. How is it that we create a vision of a Nigeria that we might not see? from either the primary school education, as you say, perhaps we're a lost cause, but perhaps we have to start making investments even from the crashes. What's the vision of a Nigeria that we see and how do we pass this vision on to the next generation? I understand that in every classroom, there's a vision of the Chinese taking the world. And somehow that seems to be happening. Our kids are in school abroad and you know, you, you, they're complaining, I, I didn't pass, why didn't you pass? My Chinese colleague, you know, got the highest marks. You go into Said and you're wondering, am I in China or am I in Britain? So somehow those, we might need to start making conscious, practical investments in the Nigeria that we envision today and for tomorrow. Things got pretty interesting from then on. We'll certainly be showing you more subsequently. A national essay competition for senior secondary school students is still ongoing, although it will close in just a few days from now. If you have written or you are still writing your essay, remember that the submissions are online at www.channelstv.com slash book club. Hurry up 
and get it done. Finally, the Nigerian Prize for Literature 2018 shortlist has been announced by its advisory board. The shortlisted works for Africa's richest literary prize are Embers by Soji Cole, Death and the King's Grey Hair by Denja Abdullahi, and The Rally by Akonji Nosiru. This year, the prize will be for drama and literary criticism. We recently introduced the 11 long-listed authors for the prize on this show. Now they are down to three. May the best candidate take the big prize. As always, we'll be happy to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. I am Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.